appears to be a make it or break it season in D.C. Last year, Wall and Beal, both all-stars. However, injuries limited the point guard. While the backcourt remains intact, major changes were made over the summer to the front court and the bench. Will Dwight have a bigger impact on the court or in the locker room? And what's a realistic expectation for Washington in a wide open Eastern Conference? It's all part of the many questions about one of the NBA's biggest mysteries. It's the Wizards team preview and it starts right now. No excuses. That's the marching orders from the owner of the team. Ten points looking ahead to the season to come for the Washington Wizards. we got an all-star and NBA champ, Steve Smith, and a guy the Wizards wish they had on their roster, a defensive-minded <laughs> guard that can pick up anybody. Derek Harper with us. I'm Jared Greenberg. The Washington Wizards may be the most perplexing team in the NBA. Injuries, guys, certainly have been a factor for this franchise, but... Maybe a lack of chemistry has been a bigger issue for this core that, listen, they went to the second round of the playoffs over a stretch of three times over four years, right? Now they just simply have us scratching our heads. So Wizards, 10 points. Let's go number one here. Does the all-star backcourt, John Wall, Bradley, Beal, have, do they need to prove that they don't need to break this whole thing up? Is it a make or break it year right now for these guys? You know, all, everything comes to wins, and I think in the expectations for them. But I would say it's not reason why because of their contracts. I think it's going to be extremely hard to maybe move one of those guys unless it gets so bad where one of these guys said they want out. I think they've over the, they're over it, Jared, of what they had, whether they like each other, can they play together. I think they know they're stuck with each other hard. And I hope because they're so talented and they're so young, they can get on the exact same page and then come out and understand it's about winning games versus their individual accolades. Jared, perplex is a great word to use when you talk about the, uh, the, the Wizards because if you look at them talent-wise, you would say this is a great basketball team, the makeup of the team. Even Porter, you, you talk about a guy like that, he fits well with those guys. Also, I, I think it's ego, in my opinion. I, I just think that a lot of times when you get guys with similar ability, Bill, John Wall, both superstar, all-star players, as you alluded to, Smitty. I think it's hard if you're not going to sacrifice. That's what it boils down to with this Washington team, to me, whether or not they'll self sacrifice themselves and their own their personal numbers to be successful as a team. It's not about one person. It's about everybody collectively when you start talking about winning in this league. And, and Harper, it doesn't seem like it's been because the pieces don't fit, right? right. It's not like other teams where we say, well, those two guys – they can't play together. They Their right. styles don't work. Right. So how do you put that ego behind you? Because this team has done a lot of talking over the years. You, they say they're done talking. You have to grow up. And that's why. How do you I, do that, though? I, you do it. Right. You, you, you look at your, your bank account. It's full. Right. The other guys look at their bank account. They're full. All that's left for you to do is win at, at this level. That, that's what it's all about. That's the bottom line is how far you go and how well you do come playoff time. Smitty, the, the number that sticks out for me from last year is 22 and 17. The Wizards were 22-17 and 17 last season against teams that didn't make the playoffs. They had some unbelievably bad losses, games where they had huge leads at home against bad teams. How do you avoid those bad losses? You know, I think Harp said it best, sacrificing. And I think also in the game of basketball is um, when you have your, I said, skill set, whether it's scoring for some guys, whether it's ball and assists, how can also you can help your teammate? Also, how can you help win a game other than what you do best? And I think for the Bradley Bills, the also the John Walls is, they got to find a way to incorporate other guys. They got to find a way defensively to get after because this backcourt with their size mm -hmm. should be locked down defenders. John Wall has great size as a point guard. Bill has great size. I think it comes down for them is I will give them a little bit of a pass. I don't think their bench was as strong as mm -hmm. it needed to be. I think they shorted up a little bit more, but I think this is the team. This is the year season right now, Harp. Spotlight is on management, coaching, Everything. and players, yeah. and everybody. And you added Dwight Howard, so yeah. spotlight's on this team. Well, you can't question what they are as a team. You can't question the talent. You can't question the average. The, the, defensively is where they struggle. Uh, gave up 106 last year in, throughout the season. But I think this is a team that's not always focused as a basketball team. I think they lose their focus throughout the season sometime, and it really costs them 
a lot of games that you, you take for granted, they're going to win. Which is why they need a guy like Derek Harper on their there roster, you go. right? Yeah. Well, it's been four decades yeah. since the Wizards won 50 games. Tweaks have been made to the supporting cast to make Washington more talented and certainly much more deeper. However, as Scott Brooks knows, success is determined in the NBA by stars. It's important that John and Brad continue their growth, um, how they lead uh, the group. Um, there's no question that John has been put in this position um, at a young age. Um, and I think it takes time to be uh, a good leader. And I think in the last two years, he's really developed in that area. He's a terrific player. He's an all-star for a reason. He does a lot of incredible things. But, you know, I, I think the thing that I'm excited about his growth um, in the locker room, that he's really matured into a player that you can really – talk to him and and players can ask him about experiences that he's gone through now now that he's going into his what his eighth or ninth year and brad's the same way i think we got a good backcourt that that can really do a good job of growing in that uh, area in, in leadership the most important thing is um you try to get everybody the ball early on get them into a rhythm i mean i got the ball 99 percent of the time so i can get my shot whenever i want to um it's just making sure everybody's comfortable everybody's happy in their position um, definitely got to get Dwight touches at times. Definitely got to get Keith more touches at times. Uh, we know me and Brad going to have the ball so we can get our own shots, but make sure Otto's more involved. And in the fourth quarter, those guys have confidence in the rhythm. They, they need to take a big shot. They're comfortable doing it. But I think for any team to be successful, you know, uh, any group of people, when you got to have positive, positive people around because we're all going to go through things as, as individuals and we're going to go through things as a team. And I think the best way to get through it is by staying positive and, you know, bringing the right type of energy um, every single day because uh, NBA season is a grind. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be some dog days. Uh, but, you know, for myself, I just try to always stay positive, always smile, and I never let people see me down. Certainly saying all the right things. On to point two here. Wizards essentially swap more chinkwood top for Dwight Howard. Dwight's numbers last year in Charlotte may be overlooked by many. About 16 and a half points per game, third in the league in rebounding. But just like seemingly each of Dwight's stops, his effort and effect on teammates was questioned. So for a team that already has chemistry issues, will Dwight Howard have a greater impact on the court with his numbers, or will the impact be felt more in his relationships or lack thereof with his team? You know, I, I, I'm... I, the thing I question with a guy like Dwight, who's obviously had a pretty darn good career thus far as a player, I, and this is, this is not a knock on him, but I, I think maturity-wise, when you don't grow in this league, you almost, it's like you push the rewind button and you went backwards. Because if you look at Dwight, you look at his frame, you look at his athleticism, all the things that he has that he's gifted to have, I don't think he's gotten as much out of his his skill set as, as he, he could have. And I think a lot of it is just being a little bit too immature, in my opinion, as a player. You know, I look at it Harp and watched him grow and play here in high school. I think he came out obviously dominant because mm -hmm. he, and then got a chance very early to go to the championship. And sometimes you think, oh, he can, I'm going to do this every year. Mm -hmm. And it didn't come for him, you know, as far as, as an organization, a team. And then I think the injuries has also hurt him. Yeah. And I, I think agree. when you have the injuries and then also you're not winning, and I think you said it best. He's tried to mask a lot that was going on injury-wise and not feeling comfortable. And I think last year was the first time I think I saw him comfortable in himself. Yep. And also that, I saw him physically back to being somewhat a Dwight Howard. He would never be the Dwight Howard we know mm -hmm. that was 18 years old jumping. But when you start to look at those numbers and just the way he was moving yep. hard, I thought he was more comfortable. If he can come with that numbers and athleticism, next for him is – leadership and demanding of playing the right way and doing and playing and doing things the right way. I'll add this, Steve. The league has gone away from yes. the Dwight Howard type centers. It's more stretch bigs in the league. I think that's going to hurt him as well. Think about this. Playoff basketball slows down to almost a walk, right? During the playoffs. You, you don't play as fast. You're scouted well, so you don't get as many easy baskets. Dwight Howard is a guy that if you needed a basket from, down the stretch. You could go inside and he could get you something. But then the problem with that is he's not a good free throw shooter. Mm -hmm. So you put him on the line late, you don't know if he's going to get one, two, and it hurts you from that and if, and if he goes a few possessions without getting a touch, does he then start to yes. sulk on defense? I think you got to take a page out of Clint Capella. The way the Houston Rockets, you got to 
Pick, dive, block shots, and you got to make the those big guys happy, though. And you got to dunk the basketball, and that's where John Wall's going to have to keep him happy. Yeah. You, you mentioned injuries. That's already a concern with Dwight Howard. We'll talk about that in our next segment. But let's move on here to Otto Porter, who says he's healthy after surgery over the summer on his left leg. Point number three here, guys. Porter has increased the scoring and efficiency basically each season in the NBA. Over the last two seasons, you realize this? He is the fourth leading three point shooter in the league based on percentage. But does Porter need to be more involved in the offense? And is that on Porter or is that on John Wall to get Porter more opportunity? You know, I'm going to go with it's on John Wall, it's on Scott Brooks, because I think you have to demand when you watch a kid like this. And I'm not talking about just touches so he can get more shots. What I love about Otto Porter, put the basketball in his hand, and I'm not saying he's a point guard, Harper, Jarrett, mm -hmm. but he makes great decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes you take, the, take John Wall off the basketball, let him free it up with Porter coming off screen and roll, let him make the right play. He's a good basketball player that fits in. And any guy that I think fits in and playing the right way, put it in his hand, not as a point guard, just him, let him touch it. I don't like Harp. Sometimes he's just standing there as a spot-up shooter. Right. He's done that well, like to your point, you looked at the numbers but he's more than just a spot-up shooter. You know, in the past, and I hate to keep bringing it back, back when we played and all of this kind of stuff, it's irrelevant at this point, but whatever happened to when a guy is efficient as an offensive player, a guy that he can make plays, you just talked about him being one of the better three-point three shooters percentage-wise, mm -hmm. why not have a, a, a point in the game where you just go at this guy? When mm -hmm. Cal Corver comes into the basketball game, over the last couple of years? He gets the ball. He gets the ball right. because, because he can do what? He can make shots. He's one of the best three-point shooters in NBA history. This guy could be mentioned in the same breath, but he doesn't get it. And I think that comes down, you said it, Coach Brooks, of course. Scott has done a decent job in, in Washington, but I think the point guard, man, that's the, that's the head of the snake right there. Right. You talk about and that's the guy that has to be, be the guy that's involved in everybody. When I play point, Jared, the number one score is number one. You get you the leading score to Smitty, you're gonna always be happy. Then you got the number two guy. You gotta make that guy happy too. And it's a real real fickle balance to do that. You talk about chemistry, yeah. putting ego aside, mm -hmm. trusting one another. Isn't that part of it where the backcourt, these guys who have the ball in their hand more than most backcourts in the NBA, know to when it's time to get somebody going, get another guy the opportunity. Man, leadership and continuity. Those two things are very important when it comes to basketball. And who's the leader on that team? It's a question. I don't think anybody can answer the question. Speechless here on the set. I, you know, and I look at I was waiting for Harp to finish. Didn't want to come. I'm done. <laughs> I think John Wall is that leader. Yeah. I think just John Wall has to be a better leader right. than what he's had in the past for the Washington mm -hmm. Wizards. I think John Wall has a time. I think this is the year that they turn the corner. But there's some Eastern Conference teams I think then got better than them. Point five on our Wizards preview show. Bradley Beal says this roster that we're looking at has the most depth of any team he's played on since entering the NBA. But here comes the injury bug, already hit by it in the first week of training camp. Back soreness has prevented Dwight Howard from getting on the court with his new teammates. And Austin Rivers has missed time with neck spasms. Do add uh, Jeff Green to the roster. Remember, he had a Really nice Eastern Conference Finals last year for the Cavs. Bringing you on the court here with Derek Harper and Steve Smith, Jared Greenberg. You know, we, we look at Dwight Howard, assuming he is healthy in the back, doesn't become right. a constant problem. The, the Marcin Gortat, uh, John Wall pick and roll game was, was pretty effective. Mm -hmm. But how does it change here with Dwight Howard in the mix? You know, Harper, I start off, I would say, and I'll run the point. I'll let okay. Harper be Dwight Howard. So mm -hmm. we come off, Interesting. Uh, first of all, <laughs> Harp, Never you imagine come up. being Dwight Howard, but here we go. You want, you want to play a little defense? I mean, I'll come out here. And you know, I, you know, I was here. wondering if Hart wanted to get you back. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hart, we're coming up. And this is Dwight, right? Dwight comes up, set to pick and roll. When he rolls, option was with Gortat, they had a great relationship. Mm -hmm. There's a bounce pass, he catches it. There's also where John Wall can get to the bucket, and he does this and he catches it. But with Dwight now, this mm -hmm. option right now, yeah, Hart. Well, you can go. This is a lob. Yeah. And the reason why that's so fantastic. Right, for, get up and get it. One, no, I can't get it, Jerry. One reason it's so fantastic Those because that weak side guy, usually it's a small heart. Mm -hmm. He can come down here and reach, right. reach Try down. To, he actually tries to get in front of you. He tries to get in front of you. Yeah. But he's not going to be able to get in front of a guy that's a lob threat. And I think if he comes off too early and say that's Otto Porter, now 
John Wall has an even better option. It opens up a lot for the guy who's handling the pick and roll with the Dwight Howard versus marching Gortat. Tell you what you want about Dwight, Dwight Howard as a player, but in the pick and roll, he's always had good hands, yes. good strong hands. You can basically throw him any kind of pass you want, yep. and he's going to be able to go and get it. So that, that's a plus. Gortat, to your point, Steve, as far as getting lobs, didn't see that a whole lot. And I think also because of he's a guy that's a fantastic offensive rebounder, when you're driving, Derek Harper and myself is driving, and that guy is a lob guy, an athletic, mm -hmm. the big doesn't want to get his body off of right. him too much early, right. and that gives you another count or half a second mm -hmm. that to maybe finish. you can get to the bucket and finish, even draw a foul when guys come over late. To, to your point, Dwight last year, sixth in the NBA, sixth in dunks per game. Mm -hmm. But really where, where he's going to help the Wizards more than anything is on the defensive end. Otto Porter is a really good perimeter defender, but, but how important is it for Dwight to stay engaged and be that defender no matter what's happening on the other end of the court? I think extremely important. Uh, that's one of the areas as a team where this Washington team has struggled, and that's on the defensive end. Again, they gave up 106 points last year in the playoffs. It got even worse for them as a basketball team on the defensive end. So I think his presence in the middle, being a, a, a policeman there, I, I think is really going to, going to be important throughout this year. And staying healthy is and, the other thing. And you think about it, if they're going to compete in the Eastern Conference, the, the Celtics prefer to play a little smaller, right, with Horford mm -hmm. at the five. You do have Baines, but uh, then you got Embiid, right? You, you, you need for Philadelphia somebody to be able to guard Embiid. And, you know, I don't know if Dwight's the best guy in the league for it, but you, you need that inside defensive presence. Yeah, he's one of the guys that can match physically with Embiid. And I think also, to your point, when you play small against Dwight, he can punish you on the offensive glass and the defensive glass. If you have Dwight Howard getting you two or three more possessions, being able to kick out the guys that wears on the defense. And I think also an offensive rebound put back, that's demoralizing for a team. When you play great defense and you get the ball up on the rim and you can't box out and he can get a, a, tip, a put back or a tip dunk, that's, I think it's going to be fantastic. For you guys like him, B, they take Dwight Howard away from the basket. And he's not nearly the same rebound that he is when he has to go out and try and guard guys out sure. there. And that's where the game has changed because bigs now, they roam not on the perimeter now. It's a whole different game when you start talking about the old traditional centers to the guys now. Number nine of ten on our Wizards preview. Marky Morris recently said that Boston has never been better than us. Number nine of ten on our Wizards preview. Marky Morris recently said that Boston has never been better than us. Is that a bit of a strange statement? considering that the Celtics have gone to back-to-back -to -back Eastern Conference Finals and the Wizards haven't made it out of the second round since 1979. I'll give you another line here, this one from John Wall. He says he doesn't want to be one of those guys who is known as a guy who can't get out of the second round of the playoffs. Wall said, on paper, we look great. He added, but that doesn't mean anything until you go out there and prove it on the court. You think about the NBA, you think about where you want to place the Wizards. Is there a team that has as high of a ceiling and as low of a floor as Washington? <laughs> I think every year you come into the season, you look at the Eastern Conference, you think that Washington is one of those teams that you, you're going to have to contend with because of their talent level that you talked about earlier, Smitty. But I don't think they have a, a, a true leader as a basketball team. And I don't think they're, they're close enough. They don't share it enough, in my mm -hmm. opinion, to really go deep and be successful as a playoff team. You look at it, Jared, this is a team where we always say it can – uh, Washington, Toronto, knock off the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. But I think right now, as you look at it, this window right now is closing because there's no LeBron James. But Boston, Toronto, Milwaukee, Philadelphia. Indiana, Philadelphia has gotten much better. I see the Washington Wizards finish about sixth in the Eastern Conference. Number 10, more or less, will the Wizards win more or less than 45 games, Smitty? More! Okay. They're going to win more Decisive. than 45 I like games. It. Yeah, I more it is. One more. I think more. I mean, just talent-wise yes. alone, these guys in the Eastern Conference yeah. should bow well as a team. Smitty, 